Photographer John Dumontel and I didn't quite know what to expect when we arrived in Israel. It's always difficult to watch a family grieve, and this was a whole country in mourning. In the end, at least for me anyway, it was a sound that left the biggest impression. This sound. It was the sound of sirens wailing, not just in Jerusalem, but across Israel. It was two o'clock in the afternoon, and suddenly everyone around me stopped, and for two minutes, the whole country came to a standstill. As I looked around, I saw some people with their heads bowed, others just staring out into the distance. And then the strangest feeling hit me. Despite this incredibly loud noise, I could hear the silence, the silence of a nation mourning. It also struck me how strong and composed Leah Rabin was at the funeral, and all I could think was, in her shoes, I'd be a nervous wreck. I was surprised to see that of the thousands who lined Mount Herzl Boulevard to watch the funeral procession, there were so many kids, young people. For some reason, I don't know why, but I'd expected an older crowd, maybe more Rabin's age, but these are the kids whose future is in many ways riding on the peace process that Rabin started. Now, I don't think a lot of people realize how small Israel is. I didn't until we drove out into the West Bank. And you see these Jewish settlements just a stone's throw from Arab towns. And then the other thing is, you're driving down the road and you're in the Jewish state, but every few miles you see a mosque because every Muslim town has one. And it's a credit to the country's commitment to religious freedom. And the people there, they're so interesting, the Arabs and the Jews. They're so distinct, they just stick in your mind like a mental snapshot. I don't have to look at their pictures to remember the Arab woman with the red dress who smiled at us, the Jewish soldier playing at the wailing wall with his weapon in tow, the Russian Jew, he was funny. He invited us into the house he's building even though he had no idea who we were, and the Arab boy on the donkey, all part of the color and the conflict as Israel enters a new dawn without Yishak Rabin. Israel is a beautiful country going through an ugly time. Both Jews in Israel and South Florida know that, and because the political situation is so precarious, many of the people we talk to temper their angry opinions on Rabin and the peace process. They tell us this is not the appropriate time to appear divided. We'll, of course, be following developments as Israel recovers from the Rabin assassination, deals with its internal strife, and strives for peace. Whatever happens inside Israel, you'll see it on News 4. I'm Ileana Varela. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.